Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Philip, and if you haven't met me already, I'm a counsellor and psychologist, shining a light on all things mental health. Remember to like this video, subscribe, and leave me a comment to keep the conversation going. My last Bojack video got such a positive response, I thought I'd do another one. Rather than focusing on random clips, I thought I'd do a character analysis. Bojack! Ugh, this guy. Hey man, wanna let you know, you are out of beer. Oh, I see you met my beautiful girlfriend, Diane Nguyen. Whoa, 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 wait a second. You drink Did you see with Mr. Peanut Butter, just quickly there, he says, Bojack Horseman, we're out of beer. He wants more beer, and he's just asked the host for it. So you see, that's a very active mindset. Now keep that in mind when we talk about Diane. Here we go. You want to know about my parents? They drank a lot. My father was a failed novelist. My mother was the heiress to the Sugarman Sugar Cubes fortune, and my dad resented her for it. He used to make me cry with him while listening to Cole Porter records. He made me build my own tree house and then he tore it down while I was at summer camp because instead of- Do you see here, Diane's character, her role in life is to allow other people to talk, to say what they want to say. And it's interesting thinking about Diane because she is one of those characters that just elevates everyone else, allows them to be them. But in this situation, you really see that Diane is just asking the questions. She's writing down what Bojack's saying. But we want to know more about her. It's important to allow other people to know more about you too. Because if you're just there asking people questions, allowing them to fill the space, you're, not, you're never able to fill that space and get your voice and your intentions heard. If you're joining us, Mr. Peanut Butter has confessed to stealing the D for his girlfriend Diane in what many are calling the most romantic gesture in the history of romance and gestures. We now await the LAPD's move. The day they make love a crime is the day I turn in my badge. There we go. Mr. Peanut Butter wants something and goes out and gets it. But he hasn't actually discussed it with Diane. He wants it to be a surprise. But Di does Diane want that? And again, what I just said about not getting your needs met based on not actually talking about what your needs are. No one knows if she actually likes the D from the, the sign. Let's see what she thinks about it. Diane, what do you think? She doesn't look too wow. happy. Wow, Mr. Peanut Butter, uh, it's kind of a lot. I don't really like to be on camera. And do you love anything or anyone? I gotta go. We'll talk about it later. Diane, when things get too intense, she has to get out. She wasn't able to say, no, I don't like it, well, but she never said that she didn't like it to begin with. He, Mr. Peanut Butter was just trying his best to do something different, to show his love and to get some love felt back. But Diane never wanted that. But maybe Diane should have said what she likes so that Mr. Peanut Butter knows who he's in relationship with. Because right there, she felt uncomfortable. She doesn't want to be on camera. Yet he's invited the whole of the media to share in his delight. You must remember, it's up to Diane to tell other people what's going on. So think about that with you. Have people done things that have made you feel upset or anxious and they've tried their best to make you feel happy, but they just don't know you. It doesn't feel like Mr. Peanut Butter knows Diane too well, even though they're in a relationship together. Thank you for rescheduling given your recent uh, everything. Yeah, that was really something. I guess he makes your heart stand stiller? Yeah, but for some reason the jury's still are out on how I feel about it. Well, that's because it wasn't for you. That wasn't a Diane thing. It was a Mr. Peanut Butter thing. What would be a Diane thing? Again, she's not asking herself what a Diane thing is. She doesn't know what she wants. She's asking other people to either second guess, like Mr. Peanut Butter, or for Bojack to tell her what should make her happy. Why is it up to everyone else to tell Diane what makes her happy? Why can't she take some agency and understand what she wants? Because if you don't know what you want, you can't ask for it. Then you don't know what it is actually you do want. So even if someone does give it to you, you're still second guessing, third guessing, trying to understand if it's good or bad. And then those overwhelming emotions come in, the anxiety, the tension, the stress. How should I react to this situation? Should I be happy? Should I be sad? Should I be happy for me? Should I be happy for them? Diane is very passive. She doesn't even know what she wants. And in order for her to be happy, she needs to know what she wants first and foremost. She shouldn't be asking anyone else what would make her happy. What would be a Diane thing? A Diane thing would be something that shows he really knows you. Like uh, giving you an iPod loaded with all your favorite podcasts. Or a practical houseplant. 
or surprising you with a bound album of photos and emails he saved. That's, that's what the Diane I know would want. What are you saying to me? Just that you should be with someone who knows you. Yeah? Like who? I... Whoa, were we... were we taping? Um, okay, uh, you want to hear my Andy Dick story? It's a doozy. You should be with someone that knows you. But it doesn't feel like Diane has been open enough to tell people what she wants. Even in that beautiful scene, Bojack tells Diane what she wants. The sorts of things that she likes an iPod filled with her favourite music, or letters, or all these things that he thinks that she'd want, but does he actually know that? Maybe he guessed, and maybe that is what she wants. But she has to also be a little bit more active in telling people what it is she wants and who she is. Let's get one thing out of the way right now. If you're a man, you're not going to get it. Some of you think you get it, you want to get it. You listen, nod, and say all the right things when we tell you our stories. But you still can't actually know what it feels like to constantly have your guard up. In parking garages, walking the street, even at work. I'm tired of trying to help men understand how it feels to be a woman. Starting now, I'm doing what it takes to put the power in my own hands. That's why I own a gun. Interesting that she's there able to take control of that narrative and she can you can feel that in her voice You can hear in her voice just how proud she is. That's probably the proudest I've ever seen Diane Especially in these clips where she's actually got a message. She knows what she wants to say and she goes and says it It's important that you get to know what it is you want and, and you have that confidence in order to say what you need to say Whether she agrees with it or not. I'm not sure doesn't seem like Diane is that sort of person that would want to come. But again, we don't know who Diane is. She's let other people tell her who to be. The real reason you go to Vietnam is because you accidentally see your soon-to-be <laughs> ex-husband kiss someone else. <laughs> At first you think, oh, it's a fling, whatever, they're drunk, it's a party. Mm. Look, just then, the first thing that Diane does, rather than be angry about it, upset about it, or say anything, she tries to... Get rid of it, mold it over. Just say, oh, it's you know, it's, it's fine, don't worry about it, keep calm and carry on. Everything will be okay in the end. But there was a, an instinct there, an emotion that came up which said, this isn't right, something's not right in myself. And we're told always to get rid of those emotions, stop feeling angry, stop feeling upset, just as I said before, keep calm and carry on. But all that that's doing is stopping you from being authentic with yourself, understanding what your emotions are trying to say. Get a picture about who you are and what makes you happy, sad, angry. And with those emotions, it tells you the next best step. So if you're angry, how to use that anger to get rid of that feeling so that you can feel happy. Or if you feel happy, to do something over and over again to make sure that you get happier and happier. In this situation, Diane sees something wrong but she's not willing to face up to it because she's been told not to. And that's basically what we've been talking about this whole video so far, is that she's not allowed to be her. And I think that many of us feel that we're not allowed to be ourselves because we have to be cool, we have to just be relaxed and just chill out. But by chilling out, you never really get to know what it is that you want because who are you chilling out for? For yourself or for other people to tell you that you're doing a good thing? For Diane, it feels like she's always been told what to do, how to be, and her expectations are based on what other people have told her to do and to be. It was safe, but it still somehow finds a new way to break. Because even though you're the one who asked for this, now that you've got it, you are completely adrift with no compass or map or sense of where to go or what to do. So you go to Vietnam. You think you might find community, a connection to something bigger, but you don't. In fact, you feel even more alone than you were before you left. But you survive. You learn that you can survive being alone. I'm really happy for you, Mr. Peanut Butter. How many people think they're going to go and find themselves by going abroad? That's a story that I've heard so many times. People say to me, I need to get away from life. I need to go traveling. I need to get away from everything. So I quit my job, 
I end my relationship and I move away. And people are doing it hoping to find a different life. But the problem is, is that everything around you just changed. But what's going on inside here and inside here hasn't. Therefore, we have new experiences. We might have fun, a different sort of fun too. I'm not saying don't travel here. I'm saying that if the reason for you going traveling is to get away from the shackles of life, then to be honest with you, that's not going to work because really you still have to live with yourself. And in this situation, I would say to Diane, what is it that's wrong with you right now? How can we fix what's going on in your life? So that when you go abroad, whether you stay where you are, you're still able to be happy, content, and have an element of control because she looked for that control by going away. But by going away, she just, all her problems just followed her there. And it stopped her from actually being able to feel happy and, and safe in herself. And safety doesn't necessarily just mean physical safety. It means emotional safety too, because she didn't feel like she had many options. She was just going somewhere, hoping for someone else to tell her what's right and wrong. Do you see the pattern here with Diane? She's looking for things outside of herself to tell her what's right, what's wrong, what gives her relief, and what success means. Whether it's getting married to Mr. Peanut Butter or splitting up with him, going traveling, asking Bojack who she is and what she should want from a relationship. This is what a passive mindset gives you. Endless dead ends, endless times that you've been told what to do and who to be based on society, friends, family, everyone except yourself. You need to be a bit more active if you're connecting with this because otherwise you're just gonna be having the same situations happen to you over and over again, hoping for something to change, hoping that there will be a difference in life. But the thing is, is that that mindset is just gonna follow you everywhere. So it doesn't matter if you're in Vietnam, in the States, in London, Wherever you are, you're going to have that mindset and you're still going to be looking around going, can someone please tell me the best next step? Please tell me what the right thing to do here is. When really, we need to hold the mirror up and go, the right thing is whatever you want it to be. I think I'm depressed. Yeah? It started when I was having trouble with my book. And then it kind of snowballed into my boyfriend saying I should take antidepressants. Are you going to? What's the point? Of antidepressants? I believe the point is to be antidepressed. Sure. Or you just flip over the nothing and underneath there's more nothing. Then you flip over that nothing and there's more nothing underneath that. So you just keep flipping over nothings all your life because you keep thinking under all that nothing, there's got to be something. But all you find is nothing. Mm, a new perspective. You know, flip over a pizza cap, flip over the pizza box and look, there's a couch. If you don't flip it over, all you can see is a pizza box. All you can see is dirty and there's no hope to sit down. Whereas flip it over, put it down, even put it on the floor you got somewhere to sit, something different, a fresh perspective. Thing is, is that you have to start thinking, okay, sitting still right now is one way of being. And if that is leading you to feel depressed, then by doing anything else, you're gonna have a different experience. Okay, it might not all go to plan, but if you say still nothing can change, whereas, you know, taking an antidepressant, seeing a counselor, doing something new, connecting with people outside of your normal world, will give you a different perspective because you're seeing other people, you're doing new things. I'd ask you just to go outside and try something. Try anything because having that break from that stillness, that stillness only depression gives you, which is I can't do anything. I can't bear doing anything because what's the point? That is a telltale sign that you need to do something else because otherwise you're never going to break free from it and i'd ask you if you feel this way to to ring someone anyone friends family or even a counselor and try and get some help to give you a new perspective and to give the choices back in your life because you do have choices things will go right there is a way out of depression if I don't write my book of essays now, I never will. So? Don't write your book of essays. I have to. Why? Because if I don't, that means that all the damage I got isn't good damage. It's just damage. I have gotten nothing out of it, and all those years I was miserable was for nothing. I could have been happy this whole time, and written books about girl detectives, and been cheerful, and popular, and had good parents. Is that what you're saying? What was it all for? I... <clears throat> Bad stuff happens, good stuff happens. Just because the bad stuff's happened doesn't mean it's damaged you beyond repair. Doesn't mean that you haven't got anything from it. In fact, the damage can be 
seen as something that's good because you've learned how to deal with it, how to manage it, how to control it, how to live through it so that you know when something bad's going to happen and you make sure it doesn't happen again. Or you're able to look at the good stuff and go, this is what I want because I've experienced it. I know I don't want to go back to that bad stuff. There's a great poem written about parenting. It's by someone called Philip Larkin. And he discussed how you can have the worst parents in the world, but at least you know how to solve issues when they come up. You can have the best parents in the world who save you from everything, but you don't know how to manage that. No matter what happens, bad stuff's going to happen and good stuff's going to happen. And just because that's the case doesn't mean that it's all in vain. It means that you can learn from the bad, learn from the good, so you can understand what you want from life because if you're just waiting to write a, a essay or or a book or something else to show your worth and show that that part of your life was for something it means that no matter what happens you're always going to be hoping that something's going to change you're always going to be hoping that this magical thing that you create will make you this happy content person whereas actually life just throws you some curveballs sometimes and you need to learn how to manage that so that learn, you learn from the bad and also learn from the good. I don't know, Diane. All I know is that this book about the girl detective is fun. I liked it. I like thinking that my daughter could grow up in a world with books like that. Or if my daughter's not a reader, a lucrative film adaptation. When I was a little girl, I thought that everything, all the abuse and neglect, it somehow made me special. And I decided that one day I would write something that would make little girls like me feel less alone. And if I can't write that book... Then... Then maybe write this other book. Maybe this book does mm. that too. It doesn't need to be an exact story of Diane. It can be a story which gives people hope that they have the option to live that freer, happier life. It can be a book that instills confidence in young women or young people rather than it being a negative book showing you what abuse is or what it's like to live a bad or negative life, what bad parenting is all about. It can be a book that says there is hope there for you. And just because we may have had a negative life or negative things may have happened to us, doesn't mean there's not that other side. It doesn't need to be a story that you're hoping it to be. It can still have an impact. Just write something which means something to you. Use that creativity for us the sense of purpose that it's designed for. Melanie, good luck with your braces. I think they look cool. Huh? Mr. Peanut Butter? Oh. Uh... Diane! You wrote a memoir? Oh, yeah. I had the idea a few months ago, then one weekend it just fell out of me. What? From the way people talk about writing? I always assumed it was very difficult, but it turns out it's not at all. Literally anyone can do it. Yes, that's always been my experience. I loved your new book, by the way. Thanks. I'm happy for you, Diane. Even though it's really easy to write a book, it's still an accomplishment to be proud of. I am. And how's Chicago? Are you a Chicagoan yet? You know, I went to school in Chicago. You went to Northwestern. That's not in Chicago. Ah, you are a Chicagoan. I'm actually about to move to Houston. In New York? Oh, I think there they pronounce it Hosetown. No, Texas. My boyfriend and I are going. Oh, wow. Boyfriend. Yeah. That's fantastic. I want to hear all about him. I assume he's a good guy. He's actually the best guy. Do you see how talking to ex-partners just puts you back into that situation where you feel sad, you feel remorse? There's so many studies done about why people find it so hard to split up. It's because social media is there and we're able to see all our past partners all the time, what they're doing. We feel like maybe it would work again. In this situation, she's, again, connected to Mr. Peanut Butter, her ex-husband. Because in the past, she wouldn't have had a phone. She wouldn't have just been able to call him. It's important if... If it's important to you to talk to that ex of yours, you have to ask yourself why that is. What's wrong with moving on? Why do you need to speak to that person and for their approval, for their to hear their voice? Why do you need them in your life? Dan's story is one that's really interesting for me as a psychologist because I see it so many times 
over and over again how people have this expectation that other people should fill in the gaps for them. And unless you're able to fill in the gaps for yourself, you're never going to be happy. You're always going to be looking to other people to tell you what's right and what's wrong. And that leaves you feeling, okay, good in the short term, but in the long term, you're always going to be looking around going, why am I not happy? Why can't I find my place in the sun? Why can't I be confident in what I want to do? That's something for you to think about today because I wonder how many times you've looked to other people to tell you what makes you special, what makes you happy, what you should be doing. And some homework for you is just to have a look and see what choices you have and what options you have too and what it is that you want from your life. And make that step, one step. For Diane, it was writing that first book. Maybe for you, it's just going for a walk, doing something different. Because once you've done it once, it makes it so much easier that you can do it again. That's the end of the video today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned from Diane and from this video too that you do have options. Just because it's the way you've always been doesn't mean it always has to be that way. But stop looking to other people to tell you what to do and make you happy. Start looking inward and go, I need to find out who I am really. Remember to like this video, subscribe, see plenty more to come. In the next video, what I want to do is to talk to you about another Bojack character. I'm going to be talking about Mr. Peanut Butter. And I'm going to be doing another video, just like this one, talking about his character and what you can learn from that. So make sure you subscribe to see that video. And also, plenty more to come. Look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.